before we start, it's worth identifying the areas of the engine in which we will be working. Here is the coil pack with the HT leads. This is your main plenum, throttle body, air temperature sensor, map sensor, VVT switch. Obviously, that's your oil filler. This is the inlet manifold itself here, and this is your fuel rail, and in there is the fuel hose connection. Underneath here is your ECU, and inside here is the fuse and relay box. Okay, the first thing we need to do is remove the air filter assembly. So I'm doing a Jubilee clip. Let's pop that off and then remove the breather from the back of the cylinder head. After that, we need to remove the throttle body cables, uh, coil pack, air temperature sensor wiring, map sensor and the VBT pulley on this end. And then take off the brake servo line from the plenum and then remove the XT leads, thus making the plenum possible to remove. After that, using a 10mm socket, remove the box holding the plenum to the inlet manifold. There are two on the back as well. Confirm this is the variable cam timing switch uh, and this is the map sensor connection. To give us access to the front of the vehicle um, and for the length of the throttle bodies we need to remove the slam panel from the car. Now to gain access to this we first remove the plastic grill section of the bumper. You need to give this a firm press in whilst holding the top. That just comes free. Then need to remove the two, the four M8 bolts each side, and there's two down the front in the front cross member. As this vehicle is previously modified, we've already removed the radiator supports, which attach here and here, and the actual locking mechanism for the bonnet itself is already removed. Normally, you have to take these out as well. In the front of the slam panel, there are two M8 bolts which are attached through the front cross member. These need to be accessed with a long 13mm spanner and don't need to be removed fully, just undone a couple of turns and you can draw the slam panel out of the vehicle. Next thing we need to do is remove the alternator brace bar which is across here. Uh, the top connection is done with two 13mm uh, spanner and a socket. The bottom one is an M10 which uses a 16mm socket. Go on the end of that and just undo that and that should come free. It's important to keep the nut and bolt that hold the top of the alternator to the support bracket. So I advise putting those back in and just doing it up a few turns so it's in place. The next thing we need to do is remove the fuel rail. Now bearing in mind that the fuel rail is under high pressure, it's very important when disconnecting the fuel line to have a piece of towel around the connection. So we'll do that now. What we need to do is squeeze either side of the clip and with a towel around it, carefully lift that out of the fuel rail. And you see that is now safe. Next thing we need to do is remove the fuel injector wiring. Uh, these are done by pressing in the little metal clip here, squeezing and pulling them off the fuel injectors. Once those are free, you can move the fuel line itself out of the way just so it's not in your way. And then using two, using the, the two 10 mils onto the inlet manifold to loosen these off, And gently prise the fuel rail from the cylinder head, remembering though that it is still full of fuel, so you need to either empty that into a safe container or put it to one side. The next thing you need to do is remove the engine mount cradle. To do that we need to jack the engine up using the sump. Now this is important to note that when you do so you need to use a block of wood or a padded jack pad. And this gets put underneath and then raised up very gently on the left hand side of the sump. 
once you've positioned your jack in the right place, gently bring the pressure up onto the engine until you can see it just start to move. At this point, you can then undo the three engine mount bolts here. These are done using a 16mm socket. Now bearing in mind that the engine is now supported on the jack, it's important to undo them evenly. And then you need to undo the additional one actually on the engine mount itself. Remember to keep these to one side as you are going to them in. Once the bolts are all loose, you can raise the cover off, leaving the engine supported on the jack. We can now lift the engine up using the jack, being very careful not to go too far or strain any mechanical components. This gives us access to the nuts and bolts on the side of the engine which we're going to need to undo to remove the lower half of the inlet manifold. At this point we need to remove the electrics from out of the way so we have clearer access. Now to do this we undo, pull this little tab out here which then releases the plastic shrouding allowing us to move this section of the wiring out of the way. It just clips in at the bottom. There's a, then a M6 bolt which needs to be removed from the inlet manifold. The wiring can be moved safely out of the way, giving you access. Next we need to remove this M10 bolt from the inlet manifold um, using a 16mm socket which I've already started. We can withdraw this completely. In addition to that we need to then move this assembly back ever so slightly to allow us the extra room when we're in installing the new throttle bodies. Now using a Torx spanner can undo the, cam belt, the auxiliary belt tensioner ever so slightly just to allow us the room to move that. Don't withdraw it completely, maybe two complete turns is enough. And next we're actually going to remove the inlet manifold. Uh, we need to take out the M8, which is 13mm head uh, bolts first. And then in this instance, bearing in mind this vehicle has already been modified, you'd normally have to use a 10mm spanner to remove these. We can use the socket. Get these ones off. Once all are loose, you can take them off by hand. Once all the bolts are out, you can now slide the inlet manifold to one side, carefully withdraw it from the engine bay, exposing the cylinder head. Once the inlet manifold is removed, we need to stop any dirt or loose nuts and bolts getting into the engine. So, using some blue towel into the inlet ports, just pop them in so they're not protruding, and then you're safeguarding your engine whilst you're cleaning the faces of the cylinder head off. At this point, you can see there's a fair amount of dirt which will affect the sealing of the new gasket. So it's important to remove this using a uh, knife edge and some uh, emery cloth or, or light sandpaper.